Grains closing mixed on Thursday. John Heinberg is joining us with analysis and some pressure in corn and soybeans on Thursday again. You know, do we continue to kind of leak here because of harvest pressure? Or are we taking out some of this South American weather premium? I think it's a combination of both of those that's you know affected the grains on Thursday. Obviously, we've seen the rains pick up in South America. You know, we watch the radars are growing a little bit more in coverage every single day. And those longer range models look like they're bringing some really good moisture in. I think that's something that's been weighing on the soybean market. On the corn side, too, you know, hedge pressure is out there now, maybe getting more into the corn side of the equation. Producers have been really pushing soybeans here. So I think that's been a big factor. But now maybe that energy is moving over into the corn side of the market a little bit more, even despite some of the demand demand figures and things for corn and both soybeans been doing pretty well here lately. Uh, just the bushels hitting the pipeline, I think, is something that's going to keep things fairly limited in the market. If these rains materialize in Brazil, are we going to see a lot of downside risks, especially in the soybean market, John? I think it brings it back on the table. Now, obviously, we got a long growing season and, you know, this is early rains and just get things started. The key will obviously be that December, January, February window when that crop is really getting put together. You know, we saw some of that dryness there last year and, you know, allowed the market to lift a little in that time frame. So we'll have to kind of see how that plays out. But again, if the perception is that the Brazil crop is going to be solid on top of, you know, we, even though maybe reduced, it's still a good crop here. There's just going to be a lot of beans on the global scale. I think that could set things up for a very difficult spring, especially if the demand were to shift away from us or we start seeing some cancellations as those cheaper Brazilian beans come into the marketplace in the late spring. So what are you looking at in terms of support that needs to hold here on soybeans? Well, right here in the very short order, obviously, we're right around this uh, this 10, 12 area, 10, 11. We bounced off this the last couple of days. I think if that were to break, that could open us up to go challenge the downside of this market in terms of a down trend, a trend line that runs off those lows. That'd be around the 980 area. I think obviously if those things, those numbers can't hold, and I think a retest of the lows definitely comes back into question again. A lot of that's going to be driven by demand. It's going to be driven by the global supply of soybeans. If we often see our, our demand pace start slowing down, which typically it does after we get through October, November, you know, that could be something that really weighs on, on the bean market, especially if that South American crop is still in good shape. But you got to figure that we're also squaring up for the WASD coming up here. I think that's part of it, too. We just got some position squaring, getting ready for the report here on Friday. You know, obviously they exited those short positions at quick pace here the last couple of weeks. So they built some length into that market, probably, you know, pairing some of that back here. Just don't want to be leaning too far one way or another. You know, still expecting soybean numbers, even if the yield moves around or comes down a little bit, still going to be extremely heavy. One of the largest carryouts in the last decade. So that could be just a limiting factor on the market. Certainly a lot of talk about late season dryness and heat, maybe trimming the top end of the yield potential off of soybeans. Is it likely we could get a surprise there, though, John? You know, again, we still hear a lot about the production that's out there. A lot of got a lot of phone calls. The guys got extra beans at above what they anticipated. You know, the question, I guess, going into that dryness is where was this crop at? Where we had a 55 bushel per acre type average and now we're at 53 or where we have 54 going to 52 and a half or something along those lines you know my bet right now was we were on the higher side of things now it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out obviously a lot of dry beans being harvested we lost you're losing weight there in that regard you know so we'll see how that comes into play in terms of what the usda forecast so we talk about harvest pressure in the corn maybe some report positioning in the corn but are you more optimistic about what the balance sheets are going to look like on Friday in terms of the corn market, especially when we look at inning stocks? You know, obviously the biggest factor I think tomorrow that is going to be the yield and what happens there. You know, we're expecting a, basically a slight move lower in the yield, but I'm still questioning that just from talking to some of the producers and the amount of bushels that they're bringing in out there. So we'll see how that number plays out. But if everything kind of holds according to expectations, you know, we can get carry out under two billion now. You know, 1.99 billion is still a lot of bushels, but at the same time, it's a psychological uh, side of it getting under two. Some of the
the biggest things that we'll watch. So does the USDA start making some demand moves? Okay, we've got corn export sales now the, the fifth best in the last decade. We've seen good ethanol grind to start the marketing year. I mean, it's early in the marketing year, but does the USDA start adding a little more demand in? My hunch is they probably stay relatively quiet at this time frame. But if we start getting carry out to continue to go under $2 billion, that could be something that at least gives us market support. Doesn't mean we're going to take off and get running again because that's still a lot of supplies, but at least something that puts that 385 low and as a low that's going to probably be good for a few weeks. Question on corn technicals because we've kind of carved out a pretty narrow range there now. We're kind of bobbing back and forth in between, aren't we? Yeah, this 420 area is just kind of one of those key psychological areas. Some, you know, if you go look at history on the charts sometimes, 420 just seems to like to hold things in as a swing point. You know, everybody likes 450 or $4. To me, that midpoint's here. Now, if we break through here, which we're kind of doing today, we'll see if we can follow through tomorrow. If that's a feeling, we'd probably go back and retest the $4 handle and just you know maybe start working towards yourself with a, a bit of a harvest low here. You know, so that's something I'm still a little defensive on. If guys got bushels they need to move, we're making sure we're just still protecting things here, especially as harvest continues to ramp up in this corn market. Wheat market up again. Are we continuing to see fun short covering there? And are we putting in risk premium, do you think? I think the weather risk premium for that Black Sea region is a major piece of this puzzle here. And we'll continue to watch the forecasts out there. The rain just does not seem to be coming. You know, so I think that's a big factor in this market. So, you know, fund movement, they typically don't like going along the wheat market, but if they got a reason to, they will. They usually don't take it very far. I would say with the buying this week, they're getting closer to flat. Uh, in terms of their position. The big thing we got to watch here, what's going on in Russia. Russia obviously dictates the entire global prices for wheat. We got a meeting with the Ag Ministry and their exporters tomorrow. If they put too much wheat out at lower prices, if we get some whisper of a export curb, that could be pretty interesting in terms of a, a price pop in the wheat market. So there's just uh, a few headlines out there that are friendly to that market right now. Uh, and some of them could turn into bigger headlines if things continue to progress in, in a negative way in terms of production. Yeah, and technically the wheat market is looking very good. You mentioned you don't think the funds will go long in the wheat market. Um, in all of the grains, are they now pretty much flat in corn and beans as well? And is there any reason for them to go long in any of those markets? You know, you know, commitment of traders is put together on Tuesday's close and then the numbers get reported on Friday. So I think with the amount of movement we've seen, we're probably getting pretty close. We're in that window for corn under that 50,000 area. So we being same as well. Wheat again, about 20,000, maybe on the short side. Now, the mo this is a spot where they kind of back in the spring and early summer kind of ran out of gas on short covering as well. And then turned around and pushed the foot and you know, put the foot on it again to back to the downside. So we'll have to see how they want to play this here. To me, my hunch is barring any major news, especially in corn and wheat, we maybe just get a little bit flat uh, and work a, a bit of a trading range here. Soybeans are still the one where we see the most heaviness in terms of the overall global supplies. I still think the biggest risk on the downside is there, especially given those supply pictures that we're seeing on the global scale with improving South American weather. And the cattle market, Lev Cattle Futures hitting some new highs for the move here. Uh, you know, talk about if you think that market's going to continue to move higher here. I know we were kind of pushed by some steady to a dollar better cash trade today, weren't we? Yeah, we got cash trade, maybe trading a, a touch higher today. We'll see how that continues to build as we go into the end of the week. Also, same time, nice move in retails this week. You know, we were just under 300 bucks here about a week ago. Now we're back to 309 on the choice carcass. So there's a little meat on the bone for the packer to continue those cash bids. But we're at a bit of a crossroads here. Again, if you draw trend lines over top, the highs, we're consolidating right at that same that trend line that we failed at back in September and August. But today's move with a pretty strong close, maybe that's a test that we want to go higher. I think tomorrow's price action and how things close going into the weekend will be very, very key for maybe the direction next week. Did a little hedging this week just because of the amount of move that we had and the fact there's a little bit of risk in this market, just given the global political situation and the volatility that we're going to see for the next 30 days until we get to the election. Good point. Hogs had good exports this morning. Um, I don't know if we were following cattle or not, but there again, do you think the funds are going to continue to push that market because they're very long there too? 
Yeah, they're holding a pretty decent sized long position. And like you said, good export sales numbers this morning. A lot of it going to Mexico, but still it's good to see product moving. I think that was some of the help market that helped bid into the market on that demand side today. Now with that, we just kind of went back to where we were consolidating on that December contract. Not sure if we'll have enough momentum to get through that top side. You know, again, we've had a pretty good run since July in this hog market. It's definitely since mid-August that maybe we're a little bit tired here. Uh, so I'm a little bit cautious, uh, but we need to see the cash market move. We continue to see strength in retail demand. That could get this leg, a hog market another little leg higher. But right now, maybe we just got to get this October contract off the books on Monday, and then we'll figure out what December really wants to do. No doubt, because it'll be at a discount. So we'll see if they want to rectify that or not. All right. Thanks so much, John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. That is 